Hey everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals and today I'd like to continue on in my series from Inspiration to Junk Journal. This is going to be part three. In part one, I went through collecting the grungy pages that are going to be used in the journal. Part two was creating tall wallpaper tags. And part three is going to be focusing on the cover. So if you remember, the inspirational piece was this pillow, which I have taken apart. And I got these two gorgeous panels from the pillow. So that led me to, well, I'm going to create two journals. Oh, I'm so excited. So what I did is I created one already. And... I know this isn't complete, but this is the basics. This is gonna be the base of my journal cover. And all I did was I cut the pillow down and I didn't do a straight edge. And then I just frayed it. And underneath, which is going to be the back side, the interior of the cover, I just got a um, coordinating fabric that I think is gonna look fabulous and some lace trim at the bottom. So this couldn't be simpler. I think it is just going to make the most awesome cover for the journal. So taking my panel here, I just want to decide, you know, which, I don't know, which way is going to be the front. Basically what I'm saying is when I fold it over, what's going to show on the front. And I like that. So we're just going to go with it. All right. Now what I did on this one is I just cut it down to size. And if you remember, this is going to be a taller journal, more of a traveler's notebook size. But to lend itself to the grungy look, I didn't want, let me get it back out again. Here's one of the signatures here. I didn't want the, um, journal cover to cover all of the pages. I wanted some of the pages sticking out. So my plan is, is to fold it over a little bit off. So meaning this side is a little bit shorter than this side. And I wanted some of the gold fabric showing underneath this particular pattern and then I wanted some lace at the bottom. So that was my thoughts for creating this. So it is going to be short. It is a little bit, a little bit shorter than the length of my pages, but not much. But you can still see all of the, you know, gorgeous papers showing through. So that was my plan. So let's just get into it here. And I am going to copy the first one that I created because I really like how it turned out. So what I'm going to do is get out my really sharp scissors here and start cutting. This is so fun to do. But on the flip side, it's like, oh, do I want to cut that off? Oh, I know. Yike. So I'm just going to go kind of around the pattern. You know, nothing... Um, there's nothing really uh, scientific about this. So that is going to be one side. Let me get the right side up here. And then I'm going to go along the bottom here. Even though I really like that frayed edge, I can create another frayed edge. So I'm just going to, you know, make it distressed. I want to make it grungy. So I'm just kind of doing a wavy pattern just all the way across. And of course, you have to save these, right? Okay, so, and another thing with the grungy look, in my opinion, is I don't want it to be exactly <clears throat> even, straight across. So as you can see, this side is a little shorter than that side. And this side is longer at the ends than in the middle. I like that look for this particular journal. And, um, you know, for other journals, I have made it an exact uh, 
you know, rectangle or square. But for this particular journal, I am just going to town on the uneven look. All right, now let's see. Do I have, I want to make sure it's about the same dimensions as my other one. You can always cut it down, but you can't really add it back on as easy, right? <laughs> and then, look at this. I've got all this left over. Oh, man. Now, if you're going to make a journal cover like I am, here's something to consider. This fabric is almost an upholstery fabric. It is thick. And so, with that being said, if you were to use a thinner piece of fabric, you may want to put some batting in between the cover and then whatever you're going to use on the interior. I did not on this because it is rather thick and it's going to hold up. So that's just, you know, something to think about. And then I'm just going to go around and distress this, pulling out the threads. Oh, and I, I think it looks really cool. I really do. Oh, this is just, oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so I'm going to go around and do that. And just get, get some frayed edges. And it's, I know they have um, tools for fraying, and I don't have any. I've just found that my fingers and my fingernails work pretty dang good. And then you continue, can continue and pull, you know, some additional fabric and, you know, threads out. So that looks really good. And then <clears throat> the piece that I'm using behind, I've already cut and I did use the same dimensions as my first one here. So let's see. And this is one of those fabrics that looks good on either side. Oh, love that. But I want to make them the same. So I had this side of the fabric facing out. So we're going to do that. Now, what I've noticed here is this is a little bit bigger than this. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say here is I don't know. See, I'm thinking I need to cut this one, <clears throat> excuse me, down a little further just because um, I want the gold showing all the way around. So I'm going to do that real quick. Now, obviously, there's nothing scientific. I do not usually uh, go for measurements and that's just me I like to I like to do this but you know if you want to uh, measure and uh, be more precise that's that works right all right so we're gonna get that going like this all right and then I've got my backing which I think looks totally awesome now I I'm wondering there again. I've got my exteriors. Yep, I think that looks really good. This might be a little long on this side. So why not? Why not just cut this baby up? And I could probably tear this. I'm not sure if it'll work. Yes, it will. Ooh. You create more of a grungy look by tearing your fabric. There's no way that I could have torn the, you know, the top, the upholstery fabric. I don't think so. And then underneath, I just added some tea dyed lace and I just want it peeking out of the bottom. And on this particular one, I lined it kind of up to the edge of the fabric and this one I have a little bit of overhang. I don't know if I'm going to keep that on there. I'm just going to see how the whole journal looks at the end. So <clears throat> I'm 
going to use Fabri-Tac here and glue this down. So let's get going on this. All right, get my Fabri-Tac going here. And I'm going to just tack down the edges because what I've done on my other journal, uh, journal cover, I should say, is I have sewn all the way around the edges. So if you were to use a uh, thinner fabric, I would, you know, put the batting in between these two fabrics. Um, but that's, there again, that's just my personal preference. I like my journal covers to um, uh, be a little more sturdy. And that's why I like to do the layering and that kind of thing. So we're going to flip this over. And I do like the way this goes across like that. So I am just going to tack this down with some little bits of Fabri-Tac there. Because I don't want any of the glue globs showing, right? All right, I'm going to flip it over and see if I like how much this is coming out. I do. I like that a lot. And let me look at my first one here. Yep, it's very similar. So from here, what I'm going to do is I am going to sew a decorative stitch all the way around the pillow cover. And I'll show you what I did right here. You can see that with some gold metallic thread because I'm playing up the gold. And another thing is that you may want to consider um, just depending on what type of fabric you're using for the cover is um, if you need to tack maybe the middle of the fabric, the, uh, excuse me, let me back up a minute, tack the top fabric to the bottom fabric. I did not, and I think it's just holding up really well. So, you know, that's entirely um, personal preference what I'm trying to say here is you may not want, um, if you fold it over, if you use a thinner fabric, it may uh, buckle a little bit. And so that's something you just need to be aware of and play around with. Okay, so from here, I am going to sew around the edges and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, here is the second journal cover. And I did do the same thing. I sewed with a decorative stitch with some gold metallic thread. So now I've got my two journal covers. Yay, I'm so excited. So let me show you how they're going to look covering the signature here. There's one and then here is the other. I just think they're going to be fabulous. Now, one thing to think about is how you want your journal to close. So the reason I'm bringing that up now is if you wanted to sew like a ribbon or something along here for the closure, if you want something sewn in, I would do it now before attaching your signature onto your cover, just because it's easier. I've done it the other way and it, it doesn't work as well for me. So with that being said, I'm going to give you guys some ideas. I haven't decided what I'm going to use on these, but maybe, you know, this uh, double tie here with some um, seam binding. Get that going here. You get the idea on these. So we've got one like that. I've got some uh, lace that has been dyed in a beautiful uh, light. It's kind of a light seafoam green and I think that looks fabulous. Or thinking about this, let me take this one off and I'll show you another option. Uh, Maybe some sari silk. I think that would be, oh, I've got a lot of strings going on here. You know, that would be fabulous. Just tying that in the center like that. 
looks wonderful, right? Oh, I'm just loving how these are coming together. Or another option would be, let me move this one out of the way, is maybe some twine. You know, that always lends itself to the grungy look of a journal. So something along those lines. And I haven't decided uh, what I'm going to uh, do on each of these, but these are these are what I'm thinking about right now, or these, you know, these type of options. So easy enough to put together, right? The journal cover from my pillow, my inspirational piece. Yay! So I am going to sew my signatures in and I haven't decided whether I'm going to use a pamphlet stitch or actually sew my signatures in with the sewing machine. So in the next video, I will have completed that and then we are gonna continue on in my series. I'm just, I'm so excited, I wanna do it right now. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video.